Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video we're going to talk about some of the basic definitions of heat, calorimetry, temperature, things like that. And uh, because what we want to do in the future here is we want to be able to work with the principle of calorimetry to figure out the enthalpy changes and reactions. So how does all that work? Well, for that we need to understand what we mean by heat, by temperature, heat exchange, things like that. So starting out with the basic definition of heat, and I know there's different definitions depending upon how you want to look at it, but the basic way to look at it is that heat is the thermal energy contained either within the chemical bonds of molecules or within the matter due to the kinetic motion of the atoms within the, within the substance. So for example, if atoms are vibrating back and forth, they have a certain amount of kinetic energy and that translates into heat contained within the object or when atoms bond together, they either release or absorb energy and that energy is then locked within the bond. So to release that energy, you have to unbond them or in some cases to release energy, you have to bond the, the chemicals together. So it, it depends what, whether or not it's an endothermic or an exothermic reaction. So in that respect, if you then take an object and you remove that heat from it, you can do that uh, by making the object colder. In other words, when you remove heat, the result is the object will become colder. The temperature will become less or lower. And typically we use the letter Q for heat and when you remove it, it's kind of like a negative Q. You're taking heat out of the object. If you add heat to the object, you will cause the temperature of the object to rise. So the temperature of an object is almost kind of a measure as to the kinetic energy state of the object. I didn't say the amount of heat in the object, but the kinetic energy state or the heat state of the object. And so temperature is actually a measurement of the relative hotness or coldness of an object. For example, if you take two objects side by side, when one is hotter than the other, that means that the energy state of the one is higher than the energy state of the other. Then if you bring them in thermal contact, in other words, you bring them in contact with one another, heat will flow from the hot object to the cold object. And that is an absolute. That will always happen. It will never happen the other way around. The net heat flow will never be from cold to hot. It will always be from hot to cold. And eventually, as more and more heat then moves from the hot object to the cold object, the hot object will become cooler, the cold object will become warmer, and that will continue until both objects are at the very same temperature, which we then call the two objects are at thermal equilibrium. They're now at the same temperature, now their energy state or their temperature state is the same, and heat will stop flowing between the two objects. Now, the change in the temperature on an object, for example, when you add heat to an object, the change in the temperature will depend upon a few things. One of them is the mass of the object. For example, if you have a very big object, you need a lot of heat added to the object to make the temperature go up a little bit. If you have a tiny little object, you add heat to it, the temperature will rise very quickly. So it does depend on mass. And it also depends on the property of the material, which we call the specific heat of the material. Because with some materials, when you add a certain amount of heat to it, the temperature will go up a little bit. And with other materials, when you add a little bit of heat to it, the temperature will go up a lot for the same amount of material. So there's a difference in the property of the material on, in how it can absorb heat and then respond to the heat with a change in temperature. That's called a specific heat. And for some of the substances that we are familiar with, we have some indications to the specific heat. Um, before I go into it a little bit more, let's define specific heat in a more technical sense. So what is the specific heat of a substance? It is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a given amount, and the standard amount is one gram of that substance, by a temperature of one centigrade degree. So if you add a certain amount of heat to an object, and the object has a mass of one gram, and the substance then raises or rises in temperature by one degree centigrade, that then will be defined as the specific heat of the object. So in the case of water, if we add 4.186 joules of energy to one gram of water, the temperature will go by one degree centigrade. Now, in that case, I can also write it down here, 4.186 joules, so this is in terms of joules, and maybe I should have put joules behind it. So this is joules, and that would be, of course, per gram times centigrade degree, per gram times centigrade degree, and so forth, right? It's a certain amount of energy per gram of the substance cause the substance to rise up by one degree centigrade. And of course for water, 4.186 joules is exactly equal to one 
calorie. That's where the definition of calorie came from, is if we add one calorie of heat or one calorie of energy to one gram of water, the temperature will go up by one degree centigrade. And even to be even more exact about that is only if the temperature rises from 14 and a half to 15 and a half degrees centigrade. But that's just a small formality. For us, it's just simply simple enough to say, you add one calorie of heat to water, the temp one gram of water, the temperature will go up by one degree centigrade. Or properly said, one centigrade degree. And of course, well, that begs the question, whoop, there goes my pen, uh, one centigrade degree is not equal to one degree centigrade. So it's again a small formality, but sometimes we misuse it. What this means is when we say one degree centigrade, that means it's one degree above zero degree centigrade. One centigrade degree is just the difference between one and the other. For example, the difference between 20 and 21 or 35 and 36 and so forth. All right. So the example here is that the specific heat for water is equal to one calorie for every one gram of water, making the temperature go about one centigrade degree, or add 4.186 joules of energy to one gram of water, the temperature will go by one centigrade degree. So it's the same thing. And now you can look at some of these others. For all other substances besides water, it's usually less. Water has the greatest heat capacity of just about any substance that we know of. Right. Now, Heat capacity. Sometimes we hear heat capacity. Sometimes we talk about specific heat. What is the difference? Well, the heat capacity is really the capacity of how much heat an object can hold. And again, that depends upon the mass and the specific heat of the object. For example, a large object with a lot of mass can hold a lot of heat. A small object can hold a little bit of heat. So that's the way to think about it. So heat capacity is simply the product of the mass times the specific heat. So it's the heat required to raise the temperature of the whole object by one centigrade degree. So not just a gram of the object, but the whole object. So it does depend on mass as well as the specific heat. Now, we will be talking about this a lot. Delta Q equals MC delta T. Some students say, hey, that looks like MCAT if you think of this as an A, easy to remember that way. But delta means change in, and so the amount of heat either added or removed from the object is equal to the mass of the object times the specific heat of the object times the change in its temperature. So that's how we can calculate the heat exchange, and when we deal with calorimetry, we'll use that equation a lot. If we deal with the heat capacity, the heat taken in or given off is simply equal to the heat capacity of the object times the change in its temperature. Remember that the big C is equal to M times the small c. And one more thing that we should know of, that the delta Q, the heat exchange, is considered positive if heat is absorbed. So if the object absorbs heat, then that's positive delta Q. If the object gives off heat, that's considered to be a negative quantity. And, whoa, I got this wrong. This should be less than, less than, there we go. So if it's less than zero, that means heat is given off the object and the temperature of the object goes down. So if an object absorbs heat, temperature goes up, gives off heat, temperature goes down. So here are some of the basic principles, basic definition of heat. Calorimetry will be dealing with heat going back and forth between objects. As a hot object gives off heat, it becomes colder. A cold object absorbs heat, gets warmer. And in the calorimetry, is exactly what happens. You'll put an object in a calorimeter, and that object, if it's hot, will give off heat to the rest of the calorimeter. And when it does that, it will reach uh, what we call thermal equilibrium, and then we can calculate things such as the specific heat of the object or the amount of heat given off by a reaction. So we'll deal with that in the next few videos. So it gives us basic definition of heat, calorimetry, temperature, heat capacity, and specific heat. And I think that we have all the tools that we need to go ahead and look at the next so many videos to understand how we deal with that.